Akuma vs Shao Kahn is a fucking matchup. Let's get this over and done with. Go watch Biffweed's video too if you fucking want. I don't know. Oh, hey, look, he can finger break. Akuma sacrificed his soul to a demon in exchange for the strength of Man, I wish Akuma vs Shang Tsung was a premiere season one, because it would have been one of the best premieres we've ever gotten for a versus show. Now, of course, that doesn't make it a perfect episode, or even a good one. However, given the time in which this episode came out and the experience, or lack thereof, of Ben Singer, the parameters in which this episode did come out, more than excuse its low visual quality, mismatched sprites, lack of dialogue, poor research, and very, very bad Wiz characterization. The charm of this is something else. It's some of the best season one episodes have. The charm of two guys who are kind of shit at what they're doing, but they're trying their best, and they have tons of passion for the project. It's something you can't make. You can't learn or watch tutorials on how to do this. You just have it or you don't, and this episode has it. As an episode, the analysis is underwhelming, but it has its moments. I like things like Boomstick sarcastically applauding the poor punishment of the gods on Shang Tsung. You've also got one of the earliest sleazy Boomstick jokes when he implies he would use morphing powers to turn to women so he can stare at them in his own time, presumably with that consent as well, which is a thing that, ha that they did. So I guess that balances out the good thing I mentioned. Also finger painting, that's funny. The fight is also pretty decent for the time. The sound design is punchy and meaty. The choreography is about the best I would expect for when it came out. And honestly, it's pretty good at characterizing the studio based on nothing but their in-universe gameplay. Akuma is fast, aggressive, hits really hard. He gives Shang basically no breathing room at the start. But Song uses his brain, sneakiness, and variety techniques to give himself some time to recover and lands him his while maintaining a safe distance aside from when he walks right into Akuma's big fuck off punch. Sure, this is not saying much that they made them accurate to their gameplay, which is already full of character, which for a more combat character is really saying something for how good Shang Tsung is as a villain, but aside from that one misstep, it's really good. And the ending is genuinely awesome, like unironically, this is a great ending. Xiao morphing into Akuma for them to have a suspenseful punching battle where you're not entirely sure who's going to win is basically the perfect way to end it. Topped off with the tense moment of both being so low on health they can kill each other in one blow, going with super moves that ends with Akuma landing the raging demon and winning the day. However, you might notice the very strong theme of For the Time. This episode shows its age. There's one really bad scene where Shang drains Akuma's health for a bit too long before running into his attack like an idiot, and the health bars, while not terribly intrusive in this episode, are definitely not welcomed. The only reason they don't intrude is because both get to a point of near death, and the way the ending is framed is Akuma stealing Shang's win at the last moment. Things that really you can only do so many times if they kept the health bars before it just gets boring. Overall, a great episode for its time that heavily shows its age, but is definitely one I'm willing to go back to just for how fun it is as one of those older episodes. A 6 out of 10, but it would definitely be like a 2 if it came out nowadays. I had to scale these scores of season 1 episodes accordingly, I hope you understand. And if you don't, uh, fuck off. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, just, I, I... <laughs> Master Bison, he's our hero, gonna take pollution down to zero. This, on the other hand, is a season 2 episode, so I'm gonna be a bit stricter towards this. That being said, Shao Kahn vs. M. Bison is pretty good, yeah. The analysis had some moments. I like the Captain Bison joke, even if it goes on a bit long, but I like that he interrupts Wiz with it, so that's a bit of extra comedy there. And overall, I enjoyed Bison's analysis, including some of the clips, because Bison has a ton of personality. Khan was also good. I liked it a few moments, but it's not as enjoyable to me. Still, solid analysis and a solid fight. Not to say it's devoid of problems, nothing is, not even my favourite episode. But the fight is overall solid. Seeing them trade their abilities again to general martial arts goodness was a lot of fun, and it had some really good moments, like M. Bison dragging Shao Kahn out of the side of the building, Khan no-selling Bison's attempt to attack his mind, Khan kicking Bison through a pillar into another pillar has a ton of impact, and Final Bison's first series of tough attacks on Khan is really cool as Khan starts with taking hits but manages to switch to defending attacks. Yes, this episode has really good action, and I think for Season 2's second episode, it's a pretty good second episode to go on. But I did mention Final Bison just then, and he is the biggest letdown of his fight. Straight up gets bodied by Khan doing the same move four times. Twice. And the death, while awesome in concept as just a raw showing of brute force, just distracts me with Bison's hand like, oh, that pisses me off as an animator. But I do like the bit after of Khan eating Bison's soul, that's a nice touch. But also, the fight is pretty slow, and I get that it makes sense for the characters, or at least for Shao Kahn, because despite how he's supposed to be a super fast badass who bows you to death, he really gets portrayed as such in his series. But what drags the pacing down to me isn't the animation itself, it's that the music is slow, meandering, and boring. Literally the entire track until Final Bison is Armageddon's slow and boring bell tower theme, which never picks up. 
Despite that, it's a good episode. Animation is solid, analysis is decent, conclusion is good, and the best part is Boons to continue the Captain Bison song after the episode's over. I, I'm surprised with how little I have to say about this. 7 out of 10. And owner of one of the most badass voices ever. You dare interrupt my tournament. Where do I begin with this? Alright, let's start with the analysis. I liked it well enough, though it wasn't anything special to me. Akuma's was fun, Khan's was about the best you can get for Trump Man. Overall, it wasn't bad. Pacing fought a little lot of points, but you know, nothing that really bothered me. The fight though, I don't like it. And you know, it sucks, because I knew I knew people were saying the episode was going to be bad because it's the SFM team. But I tried to argue against them. I was arguing, no, it could be good, it's actually the Blender team. The Blender team did that one really good episode, I'm not sure how many of you heard of it, something about Donovan from Darkstalkers vs. A Fairy? Yeah. But then the preview came out, and I was worried, and then came the episode, and I was sad. Let's start with some fundamental issues, and I want to say that I don't want to make it seem like I'm going against the animators, because I'm going to be kind of rough on this episode, and it's going to be the first time in a while for this, for the, a new episode to have that. I'm not, I'm nothing against the animators, nothing against the people involved, I just am not a fan of the finished product. Voice acting. There are two voice actors for this fight, as you'd expect. The first is Philip Sacramento as Akuma. And he does a really good job. His line reads are generally solid, and he just, he sounds good. The second is Gianni Matragrano as Shao Kahn. He does not do a good job. He doesn't have any of the gravel or sinisterness as Shao Kahn. He sounds generally like a neighbor that lives down the street from me. Comparing his voice to what Khan should sound like, there's a noticeable difference. Feel the wrath of Shao Kahn. <laughs> I am Shao Kahn. Bow to me, feel the power of Shao Kahn. Feel the power of Shao Kahn. Feel the wrath of Shao Kahn. Is that your best? Automatic shot. You suck. Prepare to die. Dare interrupt my tournament. Another fool seeking my throne. Let us make Outworld great again. It doesn't sound right, it doesn't even sound remotely threatening, and he has the same issue with Stephen Kelly's Doctor Doom, where whenever he tries to quote the actual character, it sounds unnatural and wrong. He sounds as intimidating as a pincushion, and his inflection is just not right. Second is the models. Shao Kahn's model is bad, but that's just because I don't like the MK11 Shao Kahn design. I think parts of it are good, but the helmet looks dumb because it's not really a proper skull, it's more of a samurai thing. He has those weird fingers and tumors on his arms, his face looks much uglier than he used to, and the leather looks right on him. I don't know, it's just, I'm just not a fan of that design. I know that wasn't, that, that's just a choice they made, and it's the modern Shao Kahn. I get it, but I don't like it. Akuma looks good, Shin Akuma looks a little weird, but that's accurate, he, his hair always looked kind of weird. And Oni looks really odd, for some reason he looks really squat and wide, with a dad bod. He honestly comes off as kind of adorable. Generally doesn't look like the intimidating beast Oni, but a really adorable plush. He just looks cute. They made Oni look cute. And by they, I mean whoever made the model, not the animators, of course. Then there's the environment. Why is this in a desert? The setup makes it seem like this is the setting of Mortal Kombat Battle for the tournament, but there's no audience or crowd. Shao Kahn is on his throne in the middle of some random ass desert, which makes no sense. There's only one combatant on the floor. The environment doesn't fit. It just doesn't allow any big scale attacks from Akuma that befit his betrayal. It, it just doesn't, doesn't feel right, you know? The only desert stages in Mortal Kombat I can remember are the one that's in Edenia, then the one that's in Mortal Kombat 3 during the invasion after the whole, which is after the, after the tournament. But okay, all of that I could live with if the fight was good, but it's just not. Let's, let's just go from the start and just work our way down. The starting set of blows is a bit janky, but not too bad. Shao Kahn especially, his animations are fine because they're longer and they're slower, which makes it come off as a bit less stiff, because that's just how Shao Kahn looks. We then get the Akuma jump, which has no wind-up time to it, and unlike Shao Kahn's jump in the previous episode of his, there's no motion blur or movement in the model when it happens. He just pops up and it looks fucking hilarious. Shao Kahn punches Akuma away, and Akuma goes for his Gohadoken, which Kahn catches and absorbs. That's a neat trading of abilities. Khan drags Akuma to him motionless, and this whole segment is hilarious. He hits Akuma, Akuma swings back, and then he's dragged forward as like completely motionless and gets hit. He goes for the Ashura Senku to dodge, which in concept is cool, but the way it actually looks is fucking stupid. He goes into a pose, and Shao Kahn just misses. It doesn't look like Akuma teleported and moved away because there's no effect. Shao Kuma doesn't, Akuma doesn't move as fast as he normally does when he does the Ashura Senku. It just looks like Shao Kahn missed because he did a funny pose. Akuma goes for a combo, which looks 
fine. But then he goes for a big Go Hadouken, which looks terrible. The effects are great, don't get me wrong, but Akuma is leaning forward in this really awkward position instead of having a proper dynamic line of action. His arms are not fully extended, they're kind of pulled back, like he's not giving it his all. It just looks weird compared to how it should look. Shao Kahn has some janky looking swings at Akuma with his Wrath Hammer before landing a hit, and hey look, there's a shot I like. Akuma getting sent through the sand dunes is a pretty decent shot that has a ton of impact and adds a lot to the hit, and it is the only sense of scale in the fight. And it comes from Khan. Shao Kahn goes for a taunt and gets hit out of nowhere by Shinikuma, and this is kind of funny. At the same time though, Shao Kahn was looking directly at where Akuma was coming from. He should have been able to see Shinikuma coming, and it just makes no sense. Especially when Shao Kahn's taunting is always portrayed as him looking away from his opponent to taunt towards the player, or in universe, the crowd of the Colosseum. Which obviously isn't here because they didn't bother to put that in the environment. And they didn't bother to put them in the environment, that makes sense. But usually, he's looking away from his opponent. Just like with Shao Kahn vs M. Bison, where he's not looking at M. Bison, so it makes sense. Here, he's just stupid or too slow to block, and the slow argument is weird because he fights fine just after that. Though Shao Kahn's helmet does get knocks on a funny angle, so it, uh, I like that, I like that touch, that's funny. We get another part that I actually really like, Shinikuma jumping off this rock to go for his Tatsumaki Zanku Kyaku, only for Khan to grab him after the kick and swing it around into his backbreaker is a really cool bit. It has a nice feeling of flow and impact, thumbs up, I quite like this, this is, this is probably my favourite part of the fight. He then goes for his MK9 X-Ray, which regardless of what I'm about to say, I like the fact that they had the X-Ray used this way. Reversing his X-ray move while feeling natural in the flow of the animation. Shao Kahn slamming Akuma to the ground while he's on his back after the backbreaker is natural and flows really well into the X-ray move. It is a nice bit of choreography. Unfortunately, the actual X-ray, it doesn't do the X-ray thing from the game this is referencing. See, MK9 made everything go into grayscale and blackened the background to really add impact. Instead here, Ak Akuma's head just is swapped with a model of a skull and everything else becomes basically motionless. The first time they just add a PNG on top. A PNG that mind you is also overlaid onto Khan's foot a little bit. And the second one is the same, but Khan doesn't actually damage Akuma. Like there's no damage on the skull. Combine that with the motionless look instead of looking like it's actually slow motion like it should. It just fails for me, even if the concept is cool. I will congratulate the choreography and I like that they gave it a shot in 3D, which can't be easy. Especially when the only other 3D Mortal Kombat battle had the moment go to 2D to incorporate its skull moment. I just don't think it ends up looking really good. Then comes the only transformation. What I've heard is that the intention here was Khan sucks out Akuma's soul, but in doing so, he also takes out what remains of Akuma's humanity and shit, meaning now the Satsu in Ohado basically takes over the body entirely and turns him into Oni. That's a really good idea, and it's not expressed in a way that's clear at all, but I do like the concept. However, the moment is Shao Kahn quotes Shang Tsung, Akuma says a weird line that doesn't fit. Like, why does he put the emphasis on mine? Shouldn't it be on the Satsui no Hado? Like, instead of The Satsui no Hado is MINE! Shouldn't it be And the Satsui no Hado is MINE! Like, putting emphasis on the fact that Yeah, his soul is Khan's, but the Satsui no Hado is his. And despite there being this big fuck-off explosion that would work great for an Oni transformation, instead we just have him change between frames with basically no effect. That, yeah, that doesn't look shit at all. Then there's Oni's big island punch. That's what this is, apparently. It involves a really weird looking shot of the fizz just flying here, then a big effect that covers the screen. You can't tell what happened. The shot of Oni rising up from the dust with just his eyes glowing with those trails and the line of dialogue is really cool. It matches both the look of Akuma Street Fighter V Rage Demon and Oni's super move where the eyes have trails. Good stuff. No, the Satsui no Hado is... But then when Oni actually fights Khan, it looks awful, because it's super janky. It looks really unpolished and honestly unfinished, and there's no hits box. Like, what the hell is this? The palm strike is fine, I guess, but it leaves what might be the worst shot of the entire fight. What looks like Oni, almost as if he's been green screened onto the frame, with no hit spark, no shockwaves even, like the last shot, nothing to mask how janky and bad these punches look. It just looks terrible and has no impact. There's no deformation on Khan's mold to make it look like he got hit. He's just standing there and taking it, but it just looks wrong. It doesn't look like, like, like Khan's this real boss that's tanking it. It looks like Oni's just a little wimpy bitch. Khan makes and swings his spear, which Oni jumps off of, which is a cool bit of choreography. But then Oni goes to rain go Adokens down, and there's no effect for them coming out of his hand. It ends up looking like a fight between two characters in a video game with debug tools, as they just spawn things in front of them instead of coming out of them. And like, it's weird, because the previous two Go Hadoukens had a lot of effects added to really make them look good. 
Here, he just fires them out that they spawn out of nowhere. He misses all of his shots, but then can't activate this is what looks like an untextured ellipsoid, and the blast just bounce off like fucking bouncy balls. It doesn't at all look as cool as a similar shot against Bison, where the blast changed to reflect Khan's spears when bounced back along with some really good sound design. Unlike here, where everything with Oni has limp and bad sound design. The shot of Oni blasting Khan and Khan being sent back is really janky, but I like it well enough for the concept, and Oni charging forward in a blaze of fire is cool. Oni punching through Khan's chest is a cool shot, which is a reference to Liu Kang's similar punch in MK9. Then when he uppercuts Khan, his... Khan's blood just looks like a PNG. Khan loses his helmet, forcing me to deal with Khan's dumb face for the rest of the fight. We get a shot of Oni with a Google Images lens flare over his eyes, then a weird bit where Khan rips out his own heart. Why? That's just weird. Just as weird as somehow Oni's fist making a perfect circle through Khan, with his insides being shown as pure flesh with no organs, bones, or like gaps in his body like a human would have. I, mean, I know he's not a human, but this looks like a fucking cartoon. At the very least, the shot of Oni through Khan's hole is a good shot. I just don't like Khan pulling out his own heart for no reason. Oni goes for his Raging Demon as opposed to his actual super move, and it looks slow and lame as he charges forward. Then when he backhands Shao Kahn's hammer, he's not even looking at him. He poses for the Raging Demon, but not only are his eyes looking in different directions, neither of them are looking at Khan. Khan's over there, mate! Who are you posturing to? He goes for the Raging Demon and then we get a fake out. And there's two things about this. Number one, the fake out is kinda dog shit. This whole Oni segment has been Oni dominating the fight. There was literally no way they'd have Oni go big dick energy and then win without Khan ever putting up a fight. I was genuinely shocked to hear that some people were duped by this fake out. Number two, the Raging Demon looks pretty good actually. Yeah, it's not Oni's signature move and Khan's face looks really dumb, but that's a fault of the model. And the actual animation done in the Street Fighter V style Rage Demon is pretty good. There's a bit of jank sure, but I think this shot turned out pretty good. Then Khan catches the last punch, and for some reason the music remains the same. Come on guys! When something like this happens, you need to either have the music stop or change to really sell the impact. Otherwise, it doesn't feel as impactful as it should. There's not even a shot of Oni looking surprised, it just immediately cuts to Khan's stupid fucking face, leaning downward, which looks strange, and he does this absolutely hilarious expression with TWO Google Image Lens Flares PNGs. It looks beyond stupid. He calls in his hammer, and it looks like the hammer smashes his arm in half, but no, that's not actually what happened, like what some people would think. Actually, Khan rips it off, and his hammer falls on Oni's face. I'm sorry, what? In this shot, the hammer is flying at an angle, and it's falling towards the right of Shao Kahn. Based on this shot, the hammer should land somewhere over there, behind and to the right of Khan. But instead, Khan rips off Oni's arm and knocks him forward, and the hammer has stopped in midair, teleported backwards and to the left, and fallen straight down. I know the obvious explanation is Khan teleported the hammer above Oni, but then why would you bother showing this shot if it's not meant to be how the hammer falls on Oni? Either he teleported the hammer and this shot was a waste of time, or he didn't and this shot makes no sense! We then get one of the lamest kills of all time, where Shao Kahn hits Oni and we don't even see it. We don't see the hit, we don't see the corpse afterwards, we just see Shao Kahn raise his hammer to nobody and say flawless victory when he should have said fatality. And like, there's no time for the impact set in. It happens so fast, it's like, oh okay, by the way, Oni died. He's gone. There's no wind up for Shao Kahn's swing. There's no moment where he just lets the hammer sit there for a bit before pulling it back. He really should have winded it back with both arms and then swung downward with a big impact. Instead, he just sort of pulls back with one arm and then leans forward and hits Oni. Then it should have had a few seconds to really let the death set in. Instead of immediately pulling the hammer away, reducing the death to a no impact off screen kill that's by far one of the lamest deaths in the series. And it's hard to even take this seriously when he has a Looney Tunes esque perfect circle in his chest. That was the fight, and it was shitty. And I feel bad, because it almost looks as if the fight was unfinished. There are a lot of missing effects, some things look rushed, and I wonder almost as if this fight was made on short notice, and they didn't have all the time they needed to really polish the battle. I like some bits of it. The Raging Demon looks good, some shots of Oni where it gets a bit more artistic look nice, the Tatsumaki to Backbreaker is a really good exchange, and overall I can't say it was a complete failure, because there were some nice things, and while I'm not a fan of how a lot of things turned out, some of the things that they tried were neat, like the X-Ray and concept is a really cool bit, and the whole way Oni comes into play is pretty neat, even if the transformation was limp by just having him change models mid-shot. Unfortunately, I just can't say this is a good episode. This is Season 8's first big L. I know I wasn't a fan of Blake vs Mikasa, but that episode's fight I prefer for having some really good choreography at points, more cool shots, a death and line that are way funnier to me than Akuma vs Khan when it comes to ironic enjoyment, and a fucking banger of a track, while this episode's track is just kind of there. So, uh, sadly, this is a 3 out of 10 to me. It's my least favourite of these episodes. Of course, that doesn't mean it's innately worse than Akuma vs Shang Tsung. That one just gets a pass of being Season 1. And, uh, I, I, it's not a better episode, but I enjoy it more. 
and I vastly prefer the analysis, fight, and quality of Shao Kahn vs M. Bison. Hell, it even shows Shao Kahn's personality better. While Shao Kahn here was just some generic bad guy with bad lines of dialogue, having Khan for no reason whatsoever just start laughing because of how cool he is, having him purposely let Bison worm his way into his mind just to bust out with ease and insult him, and having him adapt to Bison's attacking with a bunch of blocks when needed just feels like they play to his personality better than just feel the wrath of Shao Kahn, said in such a flat and uninterested way. Akuma vs Shao Kahn is Nether Rom Khan, where he's indistinguishable from any random goon in personality. Shao Kahn vs M. Bison is Midway Khan, where he feels like a genuine bad guy who doesn't care what you think. Not a good episode, didn't like it. Oh, and the next time is a boring stomp, but at least it has good animation potential, and I like Storm as a character more than Korra or any of her opponents, even if I would have preferred them over Storm.